My name is Ryan Burke, and I just love guitars. That's why I'm traveling the whole world to try as many as I can. You're watching 60 Cycle Hum Road Case. This episode is brought to you by Harmony Guitars. USA made guitars with nitro finishes, high personality pickups, cool retro looks, and included mono gig bags and playability that punches way above their price point. Tour gear designs and their amazingly small and flat patch cables. Big ear pedals, harnessing the cosmic power of cats, cats to transport you into a new sonic dimension. And Gun Street Wiring Shop, unlock your guitar's hidden tones with an expertly crafted custom wiring harness. See what I'm getting into here? Yeah. I've never, I've literally never heard of half of these, <laughs> which is amazing. Yeah. I, you, I just go on Amazon and eBay, and I just sort by cheapest, and then I like type in like overdrive, or like I type in reverb, and that's how I it's find amazing. things. Yeah. Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. You're watching 60 Cycle Hum. I'm joined by Josh Scott himself. Uh, right here. He's right here. Look, you can see him. We're in his place. We're at JHS Pedals, and I'm gonna have Josh review the affordable board as it is right now. I mean, it's constantly changing but a lot of these have been on here for a while the kuvave fuzz has been a long time favorite uh the most guy spring reverb has been a long time favorite so i've seen this evolve so this is there's not several affordable boards it's a revolving affordable board at one point i was trying to do like genre specific you gave affordable up. boards i did it once mm -hmm. for metal and then for shoegaze like, I don't have time to think that, about that. I don't have yeah. the headspace for that. I only have headspace for one affordable board. <laughs> I like this. So you got this powered, this outlaw board. Yeah. What's the whole thing cost? Give me the dollar amount here. What are we talking? Oh, the whole thing? Well, I didn't... It's a little bit of cheating, the Nomad board, because I don't think that's really affordable board territory to have a battery-powered amp. But it's so convenient <laughs> What <laughs> to just be able to grab it and not have to plug it in. Uh so affordable board, tell me, like, give me the oh, price. The range price range of the pedals. The demographic of okay. the pedals. I try. It started out me trying the very cheapest versions of pedals I could find yeah. on Amazon and eBay. So starting at like twenty dollars. Yeah. Eventually, I've I've ended up edging up towards you know like fifty dollar pedals every now and then. Like this is a fifty five dollar pedal. Yeah. But for a fifty five dollar pedal, it's stereo and it's packed full of stuff. Okay. So. It's I kind of am a little bit forgiving in that range, but I try yeah. to keep everything as cheap as possible. But most of these are like twenty bucks. That's probably like twenty two bucks. I think these are like like twenty nineteen, something like that. So this uh, is a couple hundred bucks. You could have the whole board potentially. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah for amazing. sure. They're okay. all just dirt cheap. The cheapest that you can are find. Are these oxygen free cables? <laughs> These I mean, are these are actually I'm a big fan of these cables. These are Hosa. I love flat pancakes. They are the flattest pancake I've found. That's cool. Like all other pancakes, they stay together pretty well. I've never had one fail on me. I love it. And years and years of use, they're fantastic. So Hosa, good job on those. I use other cables too, but I I really like these. You hobos. know what I like about this? Hosas. You're you're just saying to everybody. If, if something works, you can just use it. It's an amazing principle that well, guitar, is, it seems to be missing somewhat in the guitar world. Yeah. Guitar signal is all about... Is your cable cool? Who what cares? Your, what, your, what signals you're choosing to lose anyways? Yeah. We're so destroying like, our guitar. Yeah. You're just, you're, every step of a good guitar tone yeah. has destroyed the signal in some way. Like going straight in and not destroying any part of your signal sounds awful. Yeah. So like... I've never been accused of not being bright enough. So I've never been like, I've got a problem with my patch cables. I'm not losing highs to my patch cables. Gotcha. And these, you know, it's really the plugs that I'm a fan of. If you don't like the cable that they come with, they're pancake plugs. You take them apart, two screws, and put your own cable in there. It takes no time at all. No time. I love this. Yeah. You're like a tone philosopher. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just angry and cheap. <laughs> well, that, make, that makes you a philosopher. This is the stuff that... I would have in my personal collection as my personal collection if I wasn't a demo guy getting sent stuff. I would just be buying the cheap stuff. Is this your font? It is. I, I saw this, but I didn't fully understand. Well, tell me, tell me about this. So I, the first time I covered the Kuvave Fuzz, I had their stock version one. Kuvave. Okay. Kuv Kuvave. 
And that's how I was saying it. I was, I couldn't, they didn't, they didn't have the umlauts and everything and the accent marks on their logo. Okay. I was like, what is this word? Kuvave. What does Kuvave. it mean? Did you find out what it means? I never looked it up. You probably don't want to. I don't want to. I want, no. I want the mystery. But okay. I, I said it all fancy like that a lot. Right. Uh, the company noticed, the company is named Kuvave. They noticed that a bunch of these were selling all of a sudden. They found my video. They hit sure. me up. Like, hey, do you want, you know, you want some of our pedals with your own art on it? They were thinking... I was going to have them print my logo up here. Oh, like OEM it or something. Yeah, OEM it. I was like, no, I want it to say Kuvave still. But I, I want it like in my font with the umlauts and the accent marks. And I did have them put my logo on the bottom. Okay. but That's, on, that's classy. Only two of these exist. And I think I gave one away. I think there was a contest. I feel like you could put that on reverb for half a mil. Maybe sign 150,000. <laughs> You can go up to 999. I tried. <laughs> you can't go above that. Can't go above. That's really short sighted for Reverb to, it is. to limit. It's their loss, literally. Yeah, seriously. It's, they're losing yeah. 3%, 3.5%. 3 3. Is it 5% now? It's up there. Fight it out in the comments. Let's I'm sure do this. It's changing I'm, every day. I'm pumped for this. So Yeah, I'm curious to know what you think as like a professional circuit guy, a professional pedal guy. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of this. I've done what you've done. I have a few drawers full of like cheap pedals. I'm, I like showing affordable things. Um, I did a, a live on the Amazon line. But you have stuff here I've never played. I've only played from this board the Amazon Distortion. So mm. that's impressive. You have really pulled out some stuff here. I have, I mean, I'm not compared to this room, I have nothing. But as far as affordable board pedals go, because I've been doing this series over a year, I think, and yeah. I just keep getting stuff in, and companies send me their full runs at a time, I have these totes, like, you know, like a like a tote yeah. that you could fit a couple shoes in. Yeah. I have a stack of, like, six of them, and they're almost completely full. You're, like, king of the affordable pedals. It's more of a you're curse the, than... You're the authority. <laughs> Let's do this. All right. All right. Kuvave. Don't want to know what it means. Don't tell us in the comments. Here we go. Yeah, don't spoil the mystery, guys. Come on. Let me flip these around. We're splitting a headphone mix here. This is really romantic. It kind of is. And now we're going to yell. It feels like maybe I'll publish this on Valentine's Day, and this will be my Valentine's Day special. It's a heart if you... Yeah. You share You share a splitter. And... Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> it's fine. Here you go. You got it? Yeah, I got it. All right. This pick, I think, retail is the price of this pedal. Probably. All right. So the first thing I do with a circuit is I max out potential controls. Mm -hmm. I like to see what a max fuzz poten circuit potential and then ma max tone circuit potential. Because usually if you back off on a control, that's where modifications have been made in a circuit. Right. So I can kind of tell. That's wide open. I'm taking my guesses. Big muff. Yeah. Or with a with a gate. It's 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 unbiased. It's a misbiased fuzz. And there's people who have been complaining and commenting because they're getting newer ones, and they're saying it doesn't sound exactly the same as this. It doesn't sound as heavy gated. And I'm wondering if the newer runs, they fixed something they thought was broken. Well, if which it, is the thing that makes it what it is. If it is a big muff, it could be it could be like a silicon tone bender. The reason I say this is. Logically, in affordable pedals, they're going to use classic circuits. They right. don't want to sit around and like pay people for six months of R&D. So they're going to use classic stuff. The big muff is four transistors, and if you have certain gains, it'll gate. So I just think they put them in there, and then they made a run, and then they ordered different transistors, and they weren't the same gains. That's probably the reality. So this feels like it could be a big muff. When I back off, it does to me, because the tone control is like almost useless, and then it's just all the way on. Yeah. Which is big muff. I could be wrong. I I run this thing on the on this setting. Oh yeah. I, I never too. turn it down. That's a really 
great fuzz. Yeah. It, there's not a bad sound in it. I haven't found another affordable board fuzz that I like quite as much as this one. And it's been, it's been a long journey. Yeah. How much is that? It depends on where you buy it, but they send, tend to be right about 20 bucks. Yeah. It's going to, yeah. There's no reason to not own that. <laughs> I mean, it's great. Yeah. All right. Now, I'm not usually a, uh, a flanger guy or a flanger guy. Who, who is this by? The, the name of the company is Kuvave. And that, it's just called Fuzz. Okay. Yeah, it's just called okay. Fuzz by Kuvave. You. Now, let's talk about the flanger. I've, I've never been a flanger guy. Yeah. But there's something about this one where... By... I set. I set. I'm able to dial in like that perfect jet flange where a lot of like the cheaper flangers I've found... Like, okay. they don't have sweet spots. They don't have classic spots to them. Where this one, like, I would put this against, <laughs> like, you know, like a, like a boss flanger or something like that. Okay. I have a flanger test. Okay. It's, I play it every time. It's doing it. It's one of the only, it is the only song I've ever heard that has the lyrics, her placenta fell to the floor. I'll send you some songs. <laughs> so. If you spent some time, it would probably nail the like old Mistress Hendrix thing. Mm -hmm. So we got. You gotta have that. So you're like, you always, if you're playing a show, and the crowd's a little dry, start spraying the crowd. <laughs> the other test for for me to like flanger, it's not something I'd put on my board a lot but I have used a ton tracking is turn it into a chorus. Mm -hmm. Like a mild flange becoming a chorus is so good. So. Yeah, just those really slow tones. is that probably like 20 22 bucks somewhere in that range maybe yeah. it's more expensive maybe it's 35 bucks but it's still like affordable but then yeah but i think it's interesting because it does the tunnel worm thing too yeah you gotta have that <laughs> it just covers way more ground than any other flanger i found in the affordable boards I had a phaser in this spot before because it's fun to hit, you yeah. know, like a distortion with a with a with yeah. a modulation, and this kicked it off, and it it just fills that role for me. How fun is that? Yeah. I like. I go A Mo plus so far on both of these. A. Most people shouldn't use flanger full time. But it's, some people do and they shouldn't. They shouldn't. But if you're just a little bit curious about flanger and you don't want to take the dive, why wouldn't you start with a $20, 30 pedal? Twenty dollars, yeah. Especially when this one apparently has so much range to it, you know? It does. And then you start the addiction and then you move into like the super heavy duty, you know, tweaky versions of a flanger. Yeah, it does like anything you'd want a flanger to do. Which is like two or three things at most. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now this Delamo? is cur currently in the overdrive spot, 
um, a Dolomo, if you open these up, it's a K-line board. They're yeah. repurposed K-line circuits. Okay. Um, I tend to swap out this spot a lot because I'm fickle about... I, I'm not fickle. I'm just not committed to overdrives usually. Like sometimes I put a tube screamer in there. I'm not totally sure what this is, but it's kind of a light, crispy kind of overdrive. I like it. Uh, yeah, we'll see what you think. So yeah, when I... Just my thought process. So I look at a drive, level gain, treble base. It's probably based around like RC booster or something like that, or a Timmy. Right. It's got to be something in that land. bucks somewhere around there it's crazy I'll, I'll flash the price up with the bass all the way off. That that has a clon feeling. It's not a clon. It's not a clon. It's how I use a clon high gain. With the bass all the way off, it's giving it like a mid bump. Because the treble probably has mids in it. Let me know if I'm boring you to death. No, not at all. I like that at max gain with the bass all the way off. I never would have even thought to roll the bass all the way off. Yeah, to me, it, I mean, we're using this captor, right? Yeah, so it depends. I mean, that could be part of the headphone thing oh, going sure. on, but it feels really great with the bass rolled off. Yeah. It's really interesting to me because I've been so stuck in my own head with all these cheap pedals for over yeah. a year now to hear someone playing not the same three riffs that I play over and over what again. Is, what do you play? Just the same dumb noodling things that have no <laughs> origin and don't mean anything. <laughs> we all have, yeah. Yeah, you know, the rut that I'm stuck in. All right, this one uh, I've played, and it is a, uh, it's like a Marshall Governor thing. Yeah. But the tone control was, was brighter to me. Yeah, it's heavy. Yeah. almost buzzy but then when you actually play it that sounds dumb but when you actually play chords it has a lot of clarity i think a lot of times when trying pedals we're a little bit cursed because we're like setting at home exactly and we want it to sound huge but then if you actually play music with other humans which has been hard this last year you actually need to get rid of that bass or you'll never be heard yeah so this well, I actually had uh, I had my co-host Steve over 
yeah. a week or so back, and he we were jamming. He was playing bass, and I was playing guitar, and I brought in the affordable board, and he set up a bass affordable board. Okay. And the moment he started playing, I thought this thing sounded great. The moment he started playing, I was completely out of the mix. Yeah, you like big full guitar sounds. Yeah, they, they really suck. Yeah. Like in real life, if yeah. you go like the first thing an engineer does in the studio is high pass, get rid of the lows. All the all the all the little songs we love, the low end is gone. So that's how you hear the guitar. So it's interesting when you hear this. Like it feels a little like, uh, but then when you play, I would even go further up. That's almost psychotic amounts of tone. the thing you know and it's basic and it's basic it's I an amazon basic jeff bezos he signed the first 20 million of those they sold he hand selected the uh the resistors he did and another thing people don't realize if you open it up there's a slot for an amazon basics double a it sounds twice as good using this i mean they're just they're rebranded new x yeah or nux as i like to pronounce i got it. scolded for not saying new x i call it nux yeah it's, it's more fun. Nux is a better name. It is a way better name. All right. But they come under all sorts of brands. They're us Every other brand is usually cheaper than Nux. Yeah. Just go with whatever's like cheapest. Mits Mosky? Uh, no, yeah. that's Mosky. Mosky, but they have a horsey. No, yeah. It's not in this line. No, it's not. It's confusing. But they do like... a, a, a Coco is one of them. Coco. And yeah, I, a couple... I feel like if you could Google image down on the factories, yeah. they like all eat lunch together and then dissipate into different buildings. <laughs> uh, Twin Note is one of the rebrands. Twin Note, yeah, yeah. I have one of those. So this uh, Mosky mm -hmm. Spring Reverb. Now this this is very close to an Azor Reverb, okay. too. But I picked this one over the Azor because I just like the purple. Yeah, it makes it sound better. It makes it sound better. It has yeah. like a barcode on it for some reason. So if you go look, you could pull this up later. There is a Maleko spring chicken. Yeah. I think that's what they're going for with the look here. Totally. It's the closest to a surf sound I've gotten from an affordable reverb. Like the trail has the right voicing for like a surfing thing. But that like click that happens, that delay click, yeah. it's charming in a way, but it's not a drift. in between like some broken tape delay and like a spring reverb unit right it's great yeah I... it's honestly not too far off from what a lot of pedal builders have done to try to get a spring reverb sound where it's like this cascading bouncing delay belt yeah. and brick sort it's of thing it's usually the little belt and brick that's what's in my sp uh, spring tank and it's hard to get them to sound different I wonder if that's what's in there that actually sounds really different. Let's add some actual reverb to it. Have you Double ever done this? the reverb. A 
lot of verb. I love that. 30 bucks ish Somewhere around there. It's, it's probably one of the more expensive ones. Reverbs usually are more expensive. That's why they're kind of harder for me to yeah. get on the affordable board. Um, but I don't know. Donner yeah, or Donor? What's that? Donor or Donner? I always say Donner. Yeah. Because it's like the Donner kebab in Europe. I think that's what Yeah. It, the Donner meat. Yeah, the kebab. Donner meat. Yeah. All right. So we this, have This is a stereo delay and reverb and they're like 55 bucks. Oh, and it has tons of modes. Yeah, it has a lot of modes and so, a built-in looper. I got excited when I saw reverse. Really? Yeah. I look at this and I go, oh, it's some, nothing wrong with this, FV1 spin thing. It can't be. It's like actually way more advanced. That's like the popular DIY kind of digital format because it can't do reverse well. But this is like, so this is actually some form of and tap tempo. really decent DSP. And it has tap tempo. That's funny. Oh, yeah. Play this all day. buy this just for the reverse i love reverse so much so what else does we we got a trim delay wow I always love the names. It's probably called like Crystalis Ladder or something. That's all my dreams sound like that. <laughs> or something yeah it's like a like a bit crusher Honestly, that's crazy. How much? 55 bucks. Maybe it might be one of the $65 ones. Cuz they have yeah. they have this, they have a reverb that's stereo. They have a wow. a dumbler pedal that's not stereo and then they have a a looper noise gate. 
in that line. Yeah, it's sonically like the features, the sound. It's fantastic. It's tap tempo. I I didn't even try the retro. I'm imagining dark and bright on that probably. Actually, the retro doesn't that that switch doesn't do a lot. Okay. Like that's my big complaint about the line is that they all have a switch like that and they are all very subtle. Like it's a little bit of like grit change. Can barely hear it. Yeah, yeah I think but, it's I mean, like a, a little bit of like overdrive grit or something, but yeah. it, it barely does anything. It's not worth having a switch on there for it. It's great. I this is even in this room. I'm thinking through, a, a, other than like stumbling on something in a pawn shop, maybe uh, that's probably the best delay somebody could ever buy to learn to use delay. And like, honestly, it has every sound. Yeah. Stereo. I mean, I don't care. I never play stereo, um, but like that's amazing for people that do. That's insane. And honestly, like, that if you're a new player, me how good that is. if you're a new player and you're trying to learn how to play lead or even rhythm, yeah, having a looper oh, is so like, great. oh, I didn't the, even get into that. Yeah. The most important tool, and it's got a looper built into it. It's just like a one knob looper thing. How do I record? Is it not doing it? So. Here, just play something. There we go. We were pressing too much. to delete yeah there we go killer it's more expensive than the other affordable board stuff but it like it's got a lot going yeah. on oh that that that's shocking i'm truly surprised like you know i expected decent pedals that that's a shocker for that price yeah phoenix wings now this is it's really hard to find a decent tremolo for some reason yeah in affordable board this is like a nice kind of a mustard poop color that it's a i'm a color guy okay because right? you know i basically learned the entire powder coat catalogs trying to build petals and this is an odd color i give a lot of props to that a lot of respect for a good color that i haven't seen color respect i already like it yeah a lot of times some of the budget trims in this room many of them are quite useless you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. It's it's interesting to me that Tremolo has it has a tone to it. Where there's good ones and there's bad ones. Usually like, with me it's the amount of depth and like yeah. the, they just feel useless sometimes. Way too much and like there's no finesse to them. This feels like an ant. I'm gonna add some verb because that's what you do. it had oh, is that's i wish it wave. had one or many little knob for volume control i like that volume control on my trims yeah but the wave feels really nice the tonality of it feels really nice it's decent yeah it has a lot of depth
Awesome. This is aw this is mind blowing. These are all very good. Yeah. This Sephora board's killer. I I really hope they come out with more in this line. I hope they add like a modulation. Yeah. To the line, um, they have the reverb and they have an overdrive, which is okay. It's, it's a dumbler. Um, mm -hmm. And the noise gate, I I like noise, so why would I want to gate it? I love noise. Um, I've embraced the noise. Before I had this on here, I had a a multi effect thing that I, I think a Moo gig, uh, which is a super duper cheap thing. Everything else on it sucked, but the tremolo fit my needs, and so that's why it lived on there. Um, but yeah, I got that one and it works. Well, I could say, honestly, if I had an amp with verb, I could play a whole gig with these two pedals mm. and they're great. Great drive. Can make a lot of sounds out of that. Change the pickups for different levels of gain. And then this has everything you need. What I mean, am I missing? Like what style of effect should I be looking for and what s slot should it take? Like maybe I don't need like a high gain drive. What, what do I swap out? What should I be looking for? I would say maybe you're missing. I mean, this is cool, but maybe there's a multi reverb that has big, mm. big old, big, big sound like space bathroom sounds. Right, right. As but I, but I mean, it's hard it's to complain. Been super super hard to find good reverbs in this yeah. price range. Yeah, and it must just be like the technology. Is their verb good? It was only all right. It okay. kind of sounds lo-fi and bit crushed a lot of the time. And it's what I've experienced with a lot of the affordable board uh, multiverbs is that almost all the patches sound about the same. There's just slight like EQ shifting on them yeah. and things like, oh, here's an analog reverb or here's a spring reverb. Or, here's a, you know, you know what yeah. I mean? Like there's all these variations, but it's like, it's the same exact trail yeah. over a different EQ filter. Yeah. I know the newer Joyo line, it's a little, it's, it's more expensive. They're yeah. more like a hundred bucks. See some of those brands, their prices are raising. They're trying to be, they're trying to just be like, oh, we're just boss now. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I guess there is a gap in reverb. It's, I'm sure it has to do with the technology of it, but as as like digital yeah. stuff like this, and they figure out their algorithms and stuff, I'm sure it'll get better. I like that these are mini. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, even like my three series, I've seen them used for like seventy. That's pushing it, and it doesn't have any presets, but it is a bigger ambient delay. It doesn't do spring, so then you're trading off. That's right. a little tricky to find some like if there was an equivalent to how this works for reverb. Yeah, you could do it all. Yeah, that's wild that this entire thing, you know, some single pedals cost that. Oh, totally. I mean, and, if we and you can have fun all day on this and make music. If right. we just guesstimate that these are each thirty bucks each, and some are under, some are over, it's like ninety, one eighty, two ten. It's crazy. Two hundred and ten bucks. That's the cost of one pedal these yeah, days. I mean, a lot of times. Yeah, like one of my pedals is one ninety nine that we make here. So. That's interesting. I wish, Very cool. I wish that I had access to this stuff when I was a teenager. Oh, I agree. There wasn't a way to buy this stuff on the internet. I didn't have a credit card. Yeah, I would have had to order things out of a catalog, and there wasn't, there wouldn't have been twenty dollar pedals. When That's I was what a I kid. said about these when we did. I was like, people were complaining, but I'm going, man, if I had had access to the sounds I heard in that line or anything I've heard right. here today, oh, it was rough. I remember the crap stuff that I had to dig out of pawn shops and off like adverts where you go to some old man's garage and there's like a broken rock tech pedal that didn't sound good. <laughs> this the... is way like just to get a fuzz that cool. Yeah. It was impossible. Like literally impossible. I remember ordering the black Russian big muff, like 50, 60 bucks out of musician's friend with a credit card. My mom, I begged her, but that's better. So it's like, well, damn, that's how it feels like we live in an era now that's that's really encouraging for kids and people who can't buy. But to be fair, stuff. I've had to wade through six yeah. totes of stuff to find these seven. There is a lot of garbage out there. Yeah, I have some stuff in the drawer that's like, and it's and I usually, I like every pedal. I really do. People make fun of me because like he never bash. I'm like I will find something in every pedal that's right. fun. <coughs> There's a couple. 
There's a, I there's say, a couple that really push me in that in this range. There's no such thing as good and bad tone. There's just appropriate and inappropriate. Yeah. Like I I was playing that space station earlier and I'm like I don't know about this, but someone out there loves it. Someone out there finds uses for it. It's on tons of records. People sat there long enough to figure out where it needed yeah. to go and the first fuzzes by modern standards sounded oh, the, terrible. Like the maestro's trash. Yeah, but they became iconic sounds yeah. by way of being just what was available. So if you can find a use for, you know, some twenty dollar fuzz you found and it just scratches your itch, then you know that's amazing. Yeah, I, I would go buy this if you're watching. I don't know why this isn't more known. Affiliate links. They might right, They links. might raise the. Pro I mean, that's really good. That's good enough that I'll order this and like show it myself because there's, a, that's such a gap. I have. You know, I'm doing some similar things and not quite like this, but like, hey, pedals around 100 or 75 yeah, yeah. and trying to try to shed light on some decent stuff. Yeah. Because, like you said, you've weeded through so many things and I have drawers full of things. I'm like, eh, you know, like I'll see something on Amazon and I'll just order the set. And I'm like, it's decent. It's decent. That's impressive, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Affordable board. Affordable board, guys. You can't afford not to afford this board. <laughs> Thanks, Josh. I think I'm going to try to film one more thing here today, but I think that might be my last video for the day. Huge thanks to Josh and the whole team over here for hosting me. Um, we're going to do a live video. I mean, when this comes out, it's already been out. So well, they can go, go back and watch it. Go back and watch it again. We're going to do a, a spring reverb shootout that... Two hours long. I'm honestly wondering if we're going to be able to get through it in two hours. Yeah, we will. We will. There are we won't there play. are seven units over there, well, not one, including two, three, four, a, five, a rubber six, tote seven, full of pedals. Eight. Well, we'll we'll have eight to nine actual spring head units, like tube units, and then we're gonna have roughly, I'll say, thirty reverb pedals, and we're gonna figure out if they drip or not. And that's all that matters. Nothing else matters. Nothing so else go matters. back in time. We're yeah. we're like in the past yet this is your future or something like that just go watch it again yeah it'll be called it's on the jhs channel yeah it's not on this channel it's on his channel yeah it'll, All right. be, it'll be called does it drip the ultimate reverb shootout or some nonsense i feel like we're ripping off ola if we do does it drip we it has to be does it not drip and then it, we're not ripping off ola with the will that's it fine with me yeah yeah it's fine with me. we'll name it we'll just say watch this video as the title watch this video All right. bye everyone stay grounded